How's everybody doing this morning? Great. Everybody got their coffee infusion? <laughs> I had a high protein breakfast this morning of uh, eggs and cheese um, that my lovely wife Michelle made, so I want to thank her for that. The efficient exercise prescription. We heard Rob Wolf talk yesterday, yesterday about, the, uh, about the initiative in Reno that he was pulling off with specialty health, which is very, very exciting. Um, at Efficient Exercise, this is our passion. We know, we know the train wreck that's, that's fixing to happen with American healthcare. We know that. We can see that. Um, we know that it's coming. All of us in this room have a part to play in correcting that. Um, and together with Specialty Health at Efficient Exercise, we plan to do a similar intervention in Austin. And just today, um, I was emailing, <clears throat> excuse me, with a colleague, and uh, I think we have found a, uh, a pilot group in Austin, a, a group of uh, police officers that we can roll this out on. So we're very excited about that. I don't have all the details on that just yet, but, but that's where we're going with this. A little bit about myself. I'm the uh, Efficient Exercise Area Regional Manager. Um, we have three studios in the Austin area. We're looking to branch into Los Angeles here um, in the next year. Um, after that, uh, we'll probably branch out onto the, uh, onto the East Coast. I'm one of the founding members of uh, Paleo FX. If any of you people were at the Paleo FX conference, that was, uh, that was the doing of me and my lovely wife and, uh, and another partner. Um, Along with Michelle, I'm part of AncestralMomentum.com. My piece of that is theory to practice. That's my love. Um, I love to geek out on the theory of this. That's why I love this conference, because talks like, uh, like Matt Lalonde's yesterday is, is right up my alley. But I have to be able to synthesize this and take it into the trenches. That's what I do. And that's where I operate on a daily basis. I have to operate with people who have very little knowledge of this, of the whole paleo idea, but generally they come to me either because they were referred to by a uh, by a paleo leaning doctor in the Austin area, <clears throat> or they've just seen what I've done with a friend of theirs or a relative, and they'll come in and I don't know anything about this paleo thing that you're doing, but do that to me. So I, I get a lot of that, um, <laughs> and I do. I, I get a lot of that. So I have to be able to synthesize all of this, all of this knowledge, all of this great knowledge, and I have to put it in palatable pieces for these people to take home because. We see them at most an hour, two hours a week, um, but the rest of the time they're on their own. And they have to make decisions on their own. So I have to give them tools that they can take out and use in the real world, which is a challenge if you've ever had to work with these people because you have to work against preconditioned um, or social conditioning that they've grown up with for 40, 50 years. Um, and you have to break that. And that's, that's tough. It's challenging. It's fun. But it's tough. So again, what are we facing? Rob talked about this yesterday, and I'll just go over some of the numbers. Um, by 2030, more than one-third of the entire federal budget will be spent on Medicare and Medicaid alone. One-third of the entire budget. It's not sustainable by any, by any measure. Uh, Rob talked yesterday about 300% uh, of CDP by the year 2030. Obviously, that's not sustainable. That cannot, that cannot go on. It will bankrupt the country if we don't right the ship in a hurry. But we can argue the numbers and how these numbers are, are calculated and, and what goes into to bringing these numbers about. But the thing is, have you been to a state fair this year, this summer? You don't have to look at the numbers, really. Just look around. Just look around at what we're facing. Um, and it's not just obesity and the, the problems associated with obesity that we're facing. We're also facing a nation of youngsters that are growing up and they're being prescribed drugs from a young, very, very young age. Michelle and I were just around um, a, a child, actually a nephew of ours, whose daily diet consisted of ramen noodles, Dr. Pepper, and Adderall. And then at that point was, uh, had to be prescribed uh, melatonin to sleep at night. Obviously, if any of you have any experience with Adderall, there's no appetite. So, I mean, this, 
So not only are we facing obesity, but we're facing that side of the problem as well. And believe me, I come from the pharmaceutical industry, so I feel free to speak about that side. And I can tell you, as I rose up through the ranks of the pharmaceutical industry, you can really tell where the R&D money is going. And it's not going to the new and improved antibiotic that's, that needs to come down the line. It's not. It's going to the new, uh, to the new Viagra. It's going to insulin delivery systems. That was a big thing when I left the uh, pharmaceutical industry was insulin delivery systems. And I can tell you that the, uh, that the upper echelon and pharmaceutical companies are giddy about that because they see the numbers just like we do. At Efficient Exercise, as we have people funneled into us, either by paleo-leaning physicians or by uh, a type of screening like Rob Wolf was talking about, either way, when we get those people in right now, right now these people are generally pretty hip to the idea of coming into an exercise facility and changing their health. Once we start getting into a phase that Rob is talking about, and, and I think Rob said, um, when you're talking about firefighters and police officers, at least, when these people get funneled into us, that's their job to be able to do that, to, to perform this way. Um, and so now you're dealing with a whole other demographic that may actually be, um, they might be apprehensive, they might be even a little hostile that they have to do this. So one of, one of our jobs, and I've talked to uh, Roger Dickerman about this, he runs Relentless Fitness in the Philadelphia area, which is, they do the same thing and work with the same demographic that we do in Austin. Um, our job, <laughs> a lot of the time, is it to, be the, uh, to be the shrink, right? It's not, it's not all about uh, just training. We have to be able to bring these people in, keep them on board, keep them engaged, and that's all part of the training because we can hammer these people with the exercise and the diet part of it if we know what's right and what's needed, but if we don't get buy-in from the client, it's all for naught. So we have to, again, we have to put this in a palatable piece that we can take, and we have to take an N equals one approach. The person coming in the door, each person is a different entity. Some people can take the 100%, this is the way you do it, I got it, and I'll run with it. Other people you can't do that with. You have to take them through baby steps. But our, um, our equation is the same. Once we get them in the door, obviously we're going to put them on a nutrient-dense diet. I usually don't even mention paleo because I don't even want to get into the whole paleo versus primal versus Atkins. You just don't have time with these people to get there. After a while, you can kind of, and you talk to them, and if they want to, you can kind of delve into the differences here. But initially, we're talking sugar-free, grain-free, nutrient-dense diet. That's what we roll with. Once we get them on board, we can actually start getting into the nuances of this diet. But just those changes alone, if we can just get them to drop sugar, of all things, just sugar, just reduce sugar, reduce your, the uh, processed carbohydrate intake. We can do wonders with these people. And I've got a case study I'll show you, a real life case study um, into where this intervention actually worked. We put them on a smartly programmed exercise program. <laughs> that smartly programmed exercise program for us has to be tailored around that person's lifestyle. Our demographic at Efficient Exercise, if I had to pick one person to pin a demographic to, that would be a lawyer. Time is money. They come in. They want a good workout. They want to know that I am taking care of their fitness, and they want to be out so they can make money elsewhere. So our whole programming has to be built, <clears throat> built around their lifestyle. <clears throat> Otherwise, once again, we lose them. We can't keep them on board. So although a perfect training scenario might incorporate a little bit more time, a little bit more intervention, but I can't let the perfect get in the way of the good in this situation. I have to be able to tailor workouts that keep them on board and don't occupy a whole lot of their time, otherwise they leave. And none of us, none of us works out. <clears throat> Generally within those two interventions, the diet change, the exercise change, generally that will take care of just about any problem they have. We take the slow body fat percentage trickle down. Um, I'll show you some DEXA scans here in just a minute about uh, some of the things we look at in that area. Very rarely will we have to refer somebody out for um, maybe hormone optimization. I have had some people that come in that are pretty broken, and even after, uh, you know, even after 12 weeks of being on the program, you can tell as an experienced trainer, you can tell if somebody's hormones are optimized or not. You can tell. 
Um, you can tell the body fat, uh, body fat decreases, muscle mass being put on. Um, if, if need be, we refer people out. Um, hormone optimization, we can get them squared away. And a lot of times, too, it's a, it's a lifestyle change. If we can get them fit, we can get them eating right, we can get them sleeping right, which is huge, um, we can fix almost anything. And then we have the backstop of having some paleo MDs in, in Austin that we can send them to. Real quick, I'm not gonna, this is a whole other topic in and of itself, health versus performance. There is a profound, profound difference in training an athlete and training someone who wants to be healthy. Profound difference. So I cannot have people come to me, and, it, and my love is training athletes. I would love to train athletes, but that's not my job here. My job is to fix people and to fix the American healthcare system. That's what I've taken on. I tell people, if you are training for health and you're training more than a couple hours a week, you're doing it wrong. It doesn't take that long to train correctly and be healthy. On the other hand, if you're an aspiring D1 athlete and you've only got a couple hours a week to devote to that, you better pick another route to the big time because you're not going to get there doing it a couple hours a week. So there is a profound difference between these two. Leveraging modern technology to achieve ancestral wellness. At Efficient Exercise, we will use everything from body weight exercises to what you see right there, which, it, which is an ARX machine, adaptive resistance exercise, to create a workout in a half hour time span. Again, we're having to work with a demographic that doesn't want to spend a whole lot of time in the gym. Um, and we craft an exercise program using what I call high intensity <clears throat> intermittent resistance exercise, which is a lot like the classical hit or the classical high intensity interval training that you've heard of that's uh, more of the Tabata style training using sprints. I've kind of twisted that around a little bit. I've manipulated, manipulated it so that I can use resistance exercise and I can get a lot of work done in a half hour, which is very appealing to this very demographic that's going to be funneled to us through specialty health in this screening process. A little bit more about high-intensity resistance training, a burst of exercise, typically 20 to 90 seconds, and then we're going to back off, rest for a bit, heart rate comes down a little bit, and we hit it again. Now, there's a lot more to it than this, um, but just to give you an idea of what we're using on the resistance side, we're using a push-pull method. If this, we're using a push-pull method for resistance exercise here, and there's a lot of different uh, other variables that I can throw into to compress the training into a half hour period. Blood work versus DEXA scan. For my purposes, blood work only gets people in the door. Blood work is a means to, to show somebody something's wrong internally, you need to get in and see somebody, a lot of the specialty health deal. Once I get a person in the door, I'm really not worried about blood work until pretty, pretty far down the road because really during the initial 12 weeks of bringing somebody in, it's gonna whack out their blood work anyway. You're not getting, not getting a good picture. What you will get a good picture of is using the DEXA scan. See that little ghostly image there? I have found when people get these DEXA scans, they only take about 10 minutes to go in and have them done. They get a complete body composition breakdown. But that little ghostly image there draws people in. If you get blood work done on a client, they see numbers, and those numbers are kind of hard to relate to them, but they see something about that ghostly image there. They're like, wow, that's me. And they'll keep going back to that image and keep going back to that image. And that really draws them in. Here's a client I was saying. This is a typical client. This is someone who would be sent to us from specialty health. This guy was a former collegiate soccer player. He's only 33 years old, so he's roughly 11 years out of being a highly, highly competitive collegiate soccer player. He came to me at a time he's broken right now. Metabolically, he's, he's, <laughs> he was having a hard time. When he first initially came into the gym, the studio, he could not do one pull-up, one push-up. If you look at his DEXA scan, 37.9% body fat. He was horrified when he got that back. Horrified. So now's when the, the psychology kicks in, right? Everything's going to be okay. We're going to get you on. We're going to get you on the saddle. We're going to get you going. Everything's going to be fine. Um, DEXA scan is great too because it will also 
break things down into regions. Obviously, his abdomen, he's carrying most fat in his, in his abdomen region. Well, yeah, I can figure that. He's got some cortisol issues going on as well. I mean, all of these, all of these things that the, trained, uh, the, the experienced trainer can see are verified by the DEXA scan, but it's good because now I actually have a piece of paper to show that client to say, to let him know where we're going. So, this is after six weeks. After six weeks, and I'm going to fly by this to get to that. Six weeks innervation, okay? During this time, he lost, let me get to this. He lost about five pounds of fat, put on roughly six pounds of muscle during that time. But here's the thing, the scale is starting to wig him out. Okay? His clothes are fitting, tighten the shoulders, loosen the weight. I mean, everything is going fantastic, but he's freaking out because he's got a wedding coming up, and in his mind, he has a certain weight he wants to get down to. We keep having these conversations. It's not about weight, guys. It's about, protein. It's about body mass. It's about fat loss. How you look? How do you feel? How do you perform? Well, I'm cinching up my belt. Every day I get up, I've got to cinch my belt another notch. And Look at my clothes. Look at this. Like, Look at that, I've got room in the waist, but he's still, and this is what we have to fight against as trainers, as people are still looking at the scale, they're still fat phobic. What happens from this time on is he starts doing extra cardio on the off days. He starts reducing his fat intake. We had his diet squared away, but that's not good enough. Now he wants to reduce his fat intake. Okay, now he's on the biggest loser profile, right? He's losing weight, absolutely he's losing weight. He's losing body, I mean, he's losing muscle mass. So during the next six weeks, yes, he dropped nine pounds of scale weight, but only 2.2 pounds of that was fat, backed up by the next DEXA scan that he got. He ended up with less muscle mass than when, when he initially came into me. And this is even with with a very, very good training protocol. This is what happens when you go off the skids. This is what happens when you look at the scale and the scale alone. Now he's got a smaller metabolic engine. He's got less muscle mass than what he started with. He looked like hell when he was coming in to work out. He kept bonking during the workouts. I'm like, come on, man, let's go. We gotta pick, you gotta start eating again. You gotta get your, you gotta get everything back on track, but he's still looking at the scale. This is the stuff we have to fight against. Initially, when he went back and he got his other DEXA scan, then I had something to show to him and say, look, this is what I'm talking about. This is what's happening to you. Now I have a tool to show him. Now he believes me. Now he's like, oh, God, yeah, I can see what happened. And I related to him, and I don't know if you guys remember, back in 95 or so when Oprah went through her big weight loss thing and she toted out whatever it was, 50 pounds of fat in a wheelbarrow. If she had had a DEXA scan, she would have had to have two real barrels because one of them would have been full of 30 pounds of muscle mass. It's very true. If you don't have this DEXA scan, it is very hard to battle that scale thing with people. And it's the same thing with battling the fat phobia. They fall back to their training. I have a, I have a quote at the bottom of all my emails. We, we fall back to our level of training. We don't, we don't uh, bring ourselves up to our level of expectation. And so this is one thing we have to battle, is this constant cultural conditioning. And we can do it, but it's one client at a time, and it's got to be a cultural change. And it can be done, but it's just very, very difficult. But we're up for the challenge, and we love the challenge. And we're going to stay here and fight. And uh, Michelle and I talk a lot of times, hey, you know, we, could just, we, we know what the deal is. We know how to be healthy. We know how to do it. We can just pack it up, go to the coconut farm, and be done. But that's not helping anybody else. So we're going to stay and fight for a while and try to right this ship. Thanks.